This is a drop net or a hoop net and in this video I'm going to modify this and others to make it more like this one here which is nice and shallow making it much more suitable for using when you've got to throw them in from the bank. Hey you! You're watching Robbie Fishing. Now these drop nets are designed so that the bottom hoop hits the ground and the top hoop comes down over top and then it sits nice and flat and the yabbies or crayfish or crawfish or crabs or whatever you are in the world walk in then you pick them up and they're trapped. They're a great design, they're a basic design and they're probably the best way to catch many crustaceans. However, they are prone to tangling when you have to throw them in from the bank. So I modify mine, I take the bottom hoop out and I make them nice and shallow so that as long as it lands upright, it doesn't get tangled. Now in this video, I'm going to show you how to do that. But before I do, I've got this one that's already done and a different type of net. I'm going to go and throw them in the dam behind me now and then get to work modifying all the other ones. Now this is the net that I've already modified. I've got a bait trap in it with some good O's dry dog food. I'm going to throw that in the dam now. Now if I don't catch any yabbies here now in this next hour or so while I'll fix my other nets, that'll probably mean it's still a bit too cold because it's only early September at the moment. Anyway, let's put this in. Now that ran in with no issues at all regarding tangling. In fact, I probably could have thrown it halfway across the dam or further and it still wouldn't have tangled. Now this next one here, this doesn't need modifying. This is an open top lift net and they don't need modifying because they generally don't get tangled like the drop nets do. Although the cord is super tangled. Anyway, let's put this in and then get to work modifying my other nets. Let's go and do some modifying. Right now I'm going to be yelling a bit here because I'm quite a fair way from the microphone and there's quite a bit of wind noise. I should have bought my lav mic but I didn't and I'm sorry. But anyway, let's get to work. First thing I'm going to do is cut out the bait bomb from this one. I'm doing four here and this is the only one with a bait bomb in it. That's cable tied in. Right, was. It's not anymore. There's the net. The first thing I want to do is take the bottom hoop out. With these types of net, usually they're only tied in on a couple of sides with a bit of string. So you cut the string really short near the bottom hoop. And that will take that out. What's going on here? This one's tied in with a bit of this one's tied in with a bit of my string must have had a hole in it at some stage. That leaves you with a big long deep net without a bottom hoop. Turn it upside down, grab that mesh at the bottom. This is full of sticks and stuff. It's easier to do this when you first buy the nets when they're brand new. Now, pull it like that. You don't want to make it too short, but you don't want it too deep. The deeper it is, the more likely it will be to become tangled. Basically you want it so that no matter how much you throw it, the meat, the bait can't go over the sides. So about that deep there looks pretty good to me. So I'm going to get this bit at the end, I'm going to wrap it around itself, pull it back through itself and tie that into a little knot. Right now, there's my knot. That's how deep this net's going to be. And you can see I've got a little knot at the bottom. Now, don't just trust this knot because that knot can come loose. It's going to be wet and dry and wet and dry. What you want to do is secure the knot. If you've got cable ties, putting a cable tie around the top and the bottom, pulling it really tight is a great way to go. But I haven't got any cable ties with me, so I'm going to get some string and I'm going to tie a knot and the strings over there near the camera. Right, I've got my string. I'm going to tie a knot above the knot. 
tie a knot with this string above the knot in the net. We'll call that the net knot. I'll tie that above the net knot. <laughs> like I said, a cable tie is very good for this. If you've got one. I hope I'm not yelling too loud. I don't want to appear as though I'm yelling at you. But I don't want to be so quiet that you can't hear me because the camera microphone is so far away. I'll cut the tags off me knot, or the tails off. Now I'm going to put one on the downside, or the other side of the knot. This is just to make sure that the knot doesn't slip. This doesn't need to be any kind of a special knot. As my dad calls it, a half-hitched lard head knot is just fine. Which happens to be my specialty. Now we'll cut that tail off. Now that one's done. What I'm going to do, this already had a bait bomb in it with dry dog food in it from a recent yabbying adventure. I am going to now tie that in and then go and put it in the dam with the other nets. One thing I forgot to mention, you can if you want to, and I like to, cut the, the bottom of the knot off. Just makes it look a little bit better, a little bit less feral. Right, let's tie the bait bomb in. There it is. Not only is it fully modified, ready to go, but it's baited up. This is the, I've got a couple of other bait bombs here with no bait, and I didn't bring any bait with me, but this one's ready to go. I'm gonna go and throw this one in the dam with the other two. Awesome. Right, now I've got three more nets to modify now. I'm going to do them really, really fast, and then we'll go and check the nets. I've got three nets here, all modified, ready for some bankside yabbying adventures. Now this technique will work with yabby nets, any kind of drop nets, whether they're for yabbies, crayfish, crabs, or anything else, these will work for any kind of crustaceans. Any kind of drop nets will work the same. Awesome. Now what you'll find yourself left with is a heap of hoops, wire hoops. If you're crafty enough, you could use these you could buy some mesh and make your own small yabby nets out of these suitable to go in a backpack for bike riding adventures or motorbike yabbying adventures. Hey, that's a good idea. <laughs> anyway, let's go and check these nets. Now remember, it's the first week of September. It's still very cold. There's a cold southerly wind blowing. But these have been in for about 20 to 25 minutes. Let's see if we've got any yabbies. None in that net. There was none in that net, but it wasn't tangled either. Let's go check the open top lift net. Right, net number two, the open top lift net. None in there either. Right, well I checked the nets and I didn't catch any yabbies, but it is only early September. I've caught a few yabbies lately, but it's been very hit and miss. I'm going to clean up my mess, go for a bit of a drive, come back and check these in about an hour or so. But even if I don't catch anything, if nothing else, you should have learnt from this video how to modify your drop nets or your hoop nets. Anyway, I'll see you in about an hour's time. Right now, it's been about an hour since I last checked these nets. Let's go and check them now and see if we can catch even just one yabby. Oh, 
Oh yes, did I ever! I didn't catch one, I got to bend over because of the angle of the camera. I caught six in my modified net. Let's count them as I put them back into the water. One big one. Two, medium one. Three, medium one. Four, small one. This is more than six in here. Five, medium one. <laughs> six, small one. Seven, small to medium. And eight is a largish one, but he's not letting go. So what I love to, oh, he just got off. When they don't let go, I normally turn the net upside down. So there was eight in that net. But that was about eight more than I thought I was gonna catch being so early in September. My face, I've still got two more nets to check. And I've already proved that my modified net technique works very well when you're using grot nets or hoop nets from the bank. I'll give that a wash and then I'll go and check the other nets. Right, now it's time to check the uh, open top lift net, or the pyramid net, as some people call them. It's got a few as well. It's got... It's got five. It's got five. We've got... If I can get them out. Look, I'll tell you what, I'm going to go and tip them out. I'll see if you can see them there. There are five yabbies in there. One, two, three, four. I'm sure there was five. Unless one fell through the mesh. I'm sure there was five. Oh well. I caught four or five. <laughs> I'm sure there was five in there then. Anyway, you get the point. How do you, mate? I don't even have a bucket or anything to put these in, even if I wanted to keep them. I wasn't coming out here to go yabbying. I came out here to make a video on how to modify your yabby nets. I wasn't expecting this level of su success. There was five in there, isn't Oh no. Oh no. There was five. Look, it fell out and I stood on it. Oh, you poor thing. I knew there was five in that net, but I killed it. I stood on the poor thing. Sorry, mate. I put him back there to feed his mates. They're having a friend over for dinner. Time to check the last net, and I've got to say, I'm a little bit excited. Have a look at this. I think there's five, but they're all quite large. See them flicking around in the net there? One thing I do want to tell you, if you modify these nets and take out the bottom hoop, the net's not going to be as deep. So when you check them, it's very, very important that you check them very fast so that the force of water keeps the yabbies in the net. If you go slow, they'll flick out. That's a medium one. The rest are all about this size. I'm going to see if I can get the camera to focus on that. I don't know whether it is or not, but I hope it is. The rest are all about that size. Large enough to eat, but not monsters. Two, three. Well, oh, this poor fellow, he's got no claws. He's unarmed. Four. Five. Look at your tail, mate. Well, folks. I've taught you how to modify your drop nets or your hoop nets. I've proven that the technique works. I actually had my closing scene planned. I, I expected to catch no yabbies, and I was gonna say, I didn't catch any, but make sure you subscribe, and I promise that in the next few months you'll see me catch yabbies in these nets. But then it backfired because I caught a heap of yabbies. So all I've got left to say is thank you very much for watching.